Greetings from the Sunflower State. We were here last year, actually back in 2019, but we didn't get to do much. I only visited the geographical center of the United States. This time around, we're gonna do a little more, like this place called Monument Rocks, Wichita, the tall grass prairie, and we'll eventually end up in Kansas City. There will be flagrant omissions like Dodge City and the world's longest grain elevator, but that only gives us an excuse to come back. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free in my RV. All right, we're now officially in Kansas because I got my Kansas map and uh, they have free coffee, free coffee at the, at the rest area, at the visitor center, travel information center they call it here. Well, we're about 11 minutes away from the KOA and uh, well, after tomorrow we'll explore a little bit of Kansas, definitely more than, than last year. Last time, I spent about a whole hour in this state. Barely enough time to stop by the geographical center of the contiguous United States. And now, for the next two days, I intend to correct that mistake. We're just gonna do a quick overnight here at the KOA because after boondocking for two nights, we are ready for some full hookups. It is a beautiful day in Kansas. Well, good morning, everybody. Greetings from Kansas. And uh, we just crossed into a, a central time zone, which means we're an hour older, I guess. We lost an hour. And uh, our first point of interest here is, uh, it's called Monument Rocks. Eventually, we had to turn off onto this dirt road. That must be it. And I don't know if you've noticed, but this is pretty remote. It is a good 45 minute drive from I-70. But, as we'll soon find out, remoteness might be the theme here in Kansas. So many cows, and I guess they have the right of way. They are believed to have been formed some 80 million years ago, when this was all an inland sea. Monument rocks here were the first designated national natural landmark in the whole state of Kansas. It is fascinating to find this in the middle of this otherwise almost featureless terrain. Really, really cool place. I am really glad we stopped here, if only for a few minutes. 
we also came to the realization that our overly ambitious plans for Kansas will have to be revised. I didn't know the distances were going to be so great. If we want to stay tonight at the Harvest Host we contacted near Wichita, it's pretty much going to be a non-stop drive, so forget about Dodge City or the largest grain elevator in Hutchinson. We'll just see what we can along the way, and it is not going to be interstate. So we might be able to see something interesting, but it is what it is. Several hours later, here we are, the outskirts of Wichita, and our harvest host for the night, Wildwood Cellars. The owner, super nice gentleman, he even let us arrive a little later than what it said on the website, and we got to taste some really good wines. We particularly enjoyed the one made out of elderberries. And it is Friday, so we have a live stream to do, so good night. Have I ever told you about Surfshark VPN? Well, I've been using them for over two years now. And the VPN, it stands for Virtual Private Network. And one thing that we all have in common as travelers, at some point, we're going to have to use Wi-Fi to communicate, be it at a coffee shop or a campground, hotel, winery. And uh, there's no way to tell whether that connection is secure or not. And that's why we have a virtual private network. The VPN creates a private secure connection between your devices and the internet. It's super simple. On the, on the iPhone, it's just an app, Surfshark. And then you say connect and it, it, it'll connect to the closest uh, server uh, to your current location, but it can also connect to a server in a different location, and that's another feature. Let's say you are uh, abroad, overseas, and you want to watch a TV show that is only available in the United States, just change your location virtually. It's very simple. There's a locations icon, and the, the, there's a list of all the locations th that you can connect from. There's a features icon, and it has other features like clean web. That's kind of like an ad blocker, and, um, and it has alerts too, like when you are at risk of being hacked, it'll give you an alert. Yeah, I, I would consider having a VPN an essential thing to have when you're traveling. And Surfshark VPN has a special offer for you. If you go to surfshark.deals slash myrv and you use promo code myrv at checkout, you get 83% off and three months for free. I'll put a link in the description. Good morning. A couple from Wichita came to see us. Let me clean my windshield, take a selfie, and off we go. Oh, I almost forgot. This morning I got a visit from Lucas and he brought me a very special gift. A bottle of greatness vodka. Born in Wichita, bottled in Jacksonville, Florida, and may I say, delicious and super smooth. Mm-hmm, it is the good stuff. Let's explore Wichita a little bit, the largest city in Kansas. I mean, Kansas City might be bigger, but it is mostly Missouri. And let me tell you, Wichita? seems like a pretty cool town. There's this famous statue called the Keeper of the Plains, so we're gonna try and see it, if we can find parking with the trailer in tow. It looks like this might be it. Erected in 1974, 
the 44-foot-tall steel sculpture by Kiowa Comanche artist Black Bear Bosin stands right at the confluence of the Big and Little Arkansas rivers, although I believe around here they pronounce it Arkansas, and it represents the brotherhood of all Native Americans. This land here between the two rivers is considered sacred ground. The cool-looking building is a science museum called Exploration Place. Here's a law enforcement memorial and the historic county courthouse. All of a sudden, Google Maps has taken me through all these residential streets. Another reason why it is a good idea to have an RV specific GPS, especially if you have a larger rig. With Minitini, I figure if the UPS truck can do it, so can I. It's still pretty cool to see the residential neighborhoods sometimes, see how people live, if anything from a purely voyeuristic standpoint. Pretty large grain elevator here, may not be the largest in the world, but it's still pretty impressive. Kind of hard to fathom, two days ago we were in the mountains and now we are in the prairies. And that's where we're going next, to the Tall Grass Prairie National Preserve. This is actually one of the last remnants of intact tall grass prairie ecosystem, most of which is nowadays farmland. Check it out, they do have RV parking. Let's explore a little bit. There are miles and miles of hiking trails, but today we're just gonna see the historic ranch and maybe do a little hike, but nothing too far or too strenuous. We'll begin with the three-story limestone barn. The barn used to house livestock and equipment and enough hay and grain to feed the animals through the winter. We might do a little bit of that trail before we go. I imagine down here is where they kept the animals, the livestock. The barn was built in 1882 and all these buildings here in the ranch represent a continuous ranching legacy dating back to 1878 until as recently as 1986. I believe that is the Lower Fox Creek School. 
Well, this was a very nice stop. I wish we had the time to make one of the longer hikes and see more, but Gilly has to fly back from Kansas City tomorrow, so we'll have to postpone that. All we have time left for today is to swing by the state capital in Topeka, and that's what we're gonna do next. We are Topeka, Kansas. Let's take a quick picture, although I do believe this is the back of the building or, or one of the sides actually. Yeah, definitely not the front of the building when we can see the statues behind. Let's drive around the building which was built well, completed, sort of, in 1903, after 37 years of construction. And I say sort of, because the sculpture at the top was apparently not installed until 2002. The dome is actually taller than the one at the United States Capitol in Washington, although much smaller in diameter. It is really a majestic building. Next up, Kansas City. We're gonna stay at this campground called Basswood Resort. Main reason why? It is really close to the airport. I really doubt we're gonna be able to enjoy all the amenities since Ely is flying tomorrow and I have a couple of work days ahead of me. Oh, by the way, the airport and the resort are on the Missouri side, so we are going to cross over soon. Although we're gonna cross back into Kansas one more time in a couple of days. Here we are, leaving Kansas, crossing the Missouri River into the Show Me State. Hard to believe I've been in Kansas City now for yeah, almost three days <laughs> and I haven't really done much, you know. Illy, Illy flew back to Miami two days ago and I've been here, you know, working for the most part. Uh, but today we're gonna go downtown, we're gonna go have some Kans Kansas City barbecue with Kevin. I mean, Kevin was originally gonna organize the, the Kansas City meetup which uh, didn't happen because of COVID, but we're gonna do a one-on-one -on -one and... Um, Take the next right onto Basswood Lake, then turn right onto Interurban Road. Have some barbecue, and then we're gonna just drive around downtown area a little bit. Uh, you know, because this is probably the only time that we're gonna go to the city. Take the next right onto Interurban Road. Road for one mile. 
I told you we were coming back into Kansas. This barbecue joint is actually on the Kansas side of the city. And we're meeting up with Kevin and Raina. All right, here we are. Joe's Kansas City Barbecue. Hello there. I've always heard great things about Kansas City Barbecue, so I'm really looking forward to trying it. Yep, seems legit. Hmm, I got the burnt ends. All right. Before we dig in. Well, thank you. Thank You're you, welcome. Kevin and Reina, for, for inviting me here and having some Kansas City barbecue. Finally. Mmm, burnt ends. Well, very nice meeting up with Kevin and Reina and, um, and finally trying some, uh, some Kansas City barbecue. By the way, we're on the Kansas side of the city. And what I'm going to do now, it's... Um, I'm going to drive around town a little bit and, uh, and see if we can see some of the... Some of the things we're not gonna see, if that makes any sense. Once again, I'm gonna take some of the side streets to see what the neighborhood looks like. This street we're about to cross is called State Line Road. And just like that, seamlessly, we are back in Missouri. Seems to be a pretty cool neighborhood, by the way. This area here is called Country Club Plaza and it is a large shopping area with restaurants, you know, gentrified and it may look like just another shopping district but this happens to be the first of its kind It originally opened in 1923 the first regional suburban shopping center in the world designed with parking to accommodate for those traveling by car or horseless carriage, I believe they were called at the time. Also the first with a unified architecture. This one was designed in a Moorish revival style that kind of evokes the architecture found in Seville, Spain. I mean, this building by the end here to the right looks very similar to La Giralda, Seville's cathedral bell tower. Next, we're going to a part of town called Old Westport, one of Kansas City's main entertainment districts. All right, let's go downtown. we got here? Well, you know it wouldn't be me if we didn't come to a brewery, right? And this one comes highly recommended, by Kevin and Reina, actually. They have something called Space Camper Cosmic IPA that is really good. 
One of these days we might be back and do the tour, but right now I'm just gonna visit the beer hall and take some six packs to go. There's no doubt in my mind they are making beer inside that building. You, you get that smell that is kind of similar to bread, you know, from from the fermentation tanks. I got myself a six pack of that Space uh, Camper IPA and then I saw another IPA, single wide. There it is, Historic Union Station, which is nowadays a children's museum and a planetarium, science center, very cool looking building. Kansas City, so far? Let me tell you, I like it. It's got character. There were some other things I wanted to see here in Kansas City. One of them was the Arabia Steamboat Museum, which is kind of like a time capsule of everyday objects pulled from a steamboat that sunk on the Missouri River back in 1856. The other were the Airline History Museum and the TWA Museum at the original headquarters of Transworld Airlines, both at the downtown airport. It kind of makes sense for TWA to build headquarters almost at the exact halfway point in the country. Pretty convenient spot to land and refuel transcontinental flights. But we'll have to save all those attractions for more normal times. And we still have to do a meetup here, someday. The one that Kevin, who you met earlier, was supposed to organize and we had to cancel eventually. Because, you know, pandemic. Coming up here to the left, Historic City Market and that Arabia Steamboat Museum I was talking about. In any case, very cool city. I was not expecting to like it so much. We'll be back in more normal times for sure. And now, as we cross the Missouri River one last time, we are going to say goodbye to Kansas City as the road will take us farther east, into Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, and beyond. But more about that on the next episode. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and see you on the road. Riding, riding in